What's up everyone, China Cycling here, aka Joe, aka the Shanghai Sausage. One by drivetrains are all the rage these days, but they're not cheap, especially the drop bar options. Never fear, China Cycling is here. I'm going to show you how to get a one by setup on your gravel bike with drop bars, with a huge cassette on the back, with cable actuated hydraulic disc brakes, all starting at around 200 US dollars. Let's take a look. So first, let's take a look what this group set is. The shifters and the rear derailleur are from a brand called Sensor. Now, if you've never heard of Sensor, you're not alone. They're a Chinese company. I've covered them before here on this channel. I did a review of two of their group sets. I've been using their road group set for about two years now. Uh, you can find reviews on my channel back there. But basically, a Chinese company made up of a bunch of ex-SRAM engineers went off to do their own thing, and Sensor is what they came up with. The core group set, the Sensor SRX Pro, consists of two shifters and the rear derailleur. I picked mine up for about 700 RMB, which is about 105 US dollars. However, at the time of filming this, group set prices have gone a bit crazy. Uh, disruptments in production from COVID-19, combined with the increase in demand for cycling recently, has led to a cut in supply and an increase in demand, so prices have all gone up. Nevertheless, this three-piece group set of two shifters in the rear mech I saw on AliExpress today for around 140 US dollars. For cassettes, you're free to use any 11-speed standard cassette. Officially, the group set supports 11 to 46 tooth cassettes. However, I'm rocking a 9 to 50 tooth cassette with no issues and didn't require any hacking of the B screw or anything else. The chain I'm using is a cheap 11 speed chain left over from another build that's actually a few links too short but still works with the 50 tooth no problem. So what cassette did I go for? I went with a high Malo 11 speed 9 to 50 tooth cassette in this rather cool rainbow color. At just 380 grams, it's pretty impressive weight for its price. Speaking of price, here in China, I paid 800 RMB, which is about 120 US dollars. But if you're overseas, I found them on AliExpress for about 155 US dollars. An equivalent SRAM cassette, such as those used in the Eagle drive cranes, retail for well over 400 bucks and weigh about 30 grams less than this high Melo unit. This Heimelo cassette features a 9 tooth small ring, even smaller than the 10 tooth used on the SRAM cassettes. This gives an absolutely crazy range to the cassette of over 550%. SRAM themselves avoid using 9 tooth small cogs because of worries about fouling on frames and also the angle of the chain has to engage with the cog. However, I can report zero issues in over 800 kilometers of riding. Of course, using any cassette with less than 11 teeth on a small cog will require the use of an XD or XDR driver on your wheel set. Not a problem for me, my gravel wheels are the Winspace Learn Grapid wheels, and an XDR driver is available as a free upgrade when you buy those wheels. For the chainring, you're free to go with whatever. I had a 34 tooth laying around for my old climbing bike, and so I used that. With the crazy range of the rear cassette, this actually gives me good gravel gearing. At 90 RPM cadence, my top gear can push 44 km per hour, whereas the lowest gear can spin 90 RPM at 8 km per hour. That 8 km per hour figure doesn't quite do the lowest gear justice. You can basically ride up a wall. If you use that gear on the flat, you feel like you've dropped your chain. There's no resistance at all. If I wanted to do some gravel racing, I could throw on a 44 tooth chain ring and at 90 RPM, the top speed would go up to 57 K an hour while still retaining a useful 10 km an hour bottom gear. With bikes, everything is a trade-off. 
and the trade-off for this awesome range is the gaps between gears. At first, it takes some getting used to. The point where you naturally go for a harder gear, you click for a harder gear, and then suddenly you feel like you're grinding a gear that's way too big. It takes a little mental training to adapt, and basically shift gears about 5 or 10 RPM later than, than you usually would on a standard dual chainring road bike setup. Once you're used to it though, you never really feel like you don't have the right gear. On to the rear mech, officially supporting a maximum cassette size of 46 tooth and weighing in at 318 grams, it's not super light but not ridiculously heavy either. There's no clutch mechanism per se, but there is an adjustable spring for controlling the lower arm tension. Out of the box, the rear mech was in the medium position, and the chain slab was noticeable when bunny hopping off a curb or hitting speed bumps and stuff like that. Adjusting the spring to the hive position improved things a lot. There's still occasionally chain slab, but it has improved. The smaller size of the 9 tooth cog puts the chain very close to the chainstay, so fully eliminating chain slap would be a rather tall order. I've not scratched or damaged my chainstays in over 800Ks of riding, but it's probably worth putting some helicopter tape on the chainstays if you're worried about that kind of thing. The rear mech uses SRAM 1 to 1 cable pull ratios, meaning you can use this rear mech with any SRAM road or mountain bike shifters that are 11 speed or less that use SRAM's exact actuation. The shifters seem very similar to the 2x road version I reviewed a couple of years ago. The main difference being the left shifter is now locked in place and unable to shift, or is it? The mechanics for shifting seem to be all included in the shifter, and it looks like it could be modified to allow for shifting. I guess they do this to keep their production line simple and have the road gravel lines using the same production line as the gravel line. Shifting on the right lever uses SRAM style double tap shifting, where releasing the shifter after the first click gives you a harder gear, whereas pushing past the first click onto the second click will give you an easier gear. Continue pushing past the second and onto the third click and you can shift up a maximum of two gears per sweep of the right shifter. The swing angle of the shifter seems to have been improved from the road version I reviewed a few years ago. A full swing is now very comfortable on the huds, but a little bit of a stretch for my small trump hands when riding in the drops. If you're worried about weight, don't be. The pair of shifters nudge the scales at 320 grams. At somewhere between 105 and Altegra weights. Ergonomically, the shifters are, eh, they're all right. This is probably personal preference and also depends what you're used to. They're easy to grip and generally comfortable to use, but the rubber material used for the HUD cover seems lacking when compared to options from the likes of SRAM or Shimano. It's not show-stoppingly bad, but just a noticeable area where they've tried to cut costs. The resting position of the brake levers can also be adjusted based on your hand size. These shifters are designed for cable brakes, not hydraulic brakes. So you'll need to have a braking solution that uses cables as opposed to hydraulics. As for the brake lever throw, I'll address that when I talk about the brakes later. For braking duties, I'm using these Z-Race cable actuated hydraulic brake levers. These use a traditional brake cable to pull an arm, which then uses a piston to compress hydraulic fluid into pushing the brake pads onto the rotors. There are two huge advantages to this setup, weight and cost. The two calipers weigh in at 280 grams for the pair. Compared with the weight saving of not using hydraulic shifters, and you're talking about weight savings about 300 to 400 grams compared to a traditional hydraulic disc brake setup. Cost is the second big advantage. On AliExpress, you can get a pair of these brake calipers with rotors for 40 US dollars. A bit of a bargain. But the cheapest brakes in the world aren't gonna help if they don't work. 
Brakes are one area of the bike you don't really want to be messing around and definitely don't want to fail when you're flying down a hill. The brake calipers seem well designed, there's a threaded arm for adjusting preload and all the machining looks pretty well done. So how does it ride? First, let's talk about shifting. The shifting is great. Like, not even good, just straight up great. You shift, it shifts, job done. No jumping around, no click, 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 click. It just works super crisp. Sometimes going from the 42 tooth to the 50 tooth of my cassette makes a bit of a gear grinding sound, but I put some of this down to using squirt wax lube, which is notoriously noisy lubricant. In 800 Ks of riding, about 400 Ks of which is probably gravelly adventure rides, I didn't have a single chain drop. The shifting is great. I love it. Breaking, breaking, breaking. Uh, <laughs> well, this could be the elephant in the room. On the first ride, the braking performance was so bad. Going down anything steeper than like a 5% gradient was downright scary. Now, so you know where I'm coming from, I've been spoiled recently by riding SRAM Force Axis hydraulic brakes. On that bike, I can brake with my little finger. But I've also ridden rim brakes for years in all shapes and sizes, including some pretty terrible cheap rim brakes. But this was worse than all of them. I instantly assumed it was the brake calipers. So I swapped them out for some high-end TRP cable disc brake calipers I had laying around. But still, no real improvement. Then I was wondering if it's the rotors. So I swapped the stock 140mm rotor out for a brand new Shimano Altegra 160mm one. Again, a slight improvement, but still pretty poor. I went back to the Z-Race calipers and stuck with them for a while. And now maybe they've bedded in or something and braking performance is like acceptable. A, a C minus, if you will. Just the other day, however, I saw Trace Velo put together a new disc brake road bike using these very same brake calipers. And he claims he's getting about 90% the performance of fully hydraulic disc brakes. For the record, I'd say I'm getting about 20%. So the only culprit I can think of is the brake lever throw of the shifters. They go from zero engagement of the brakes to being fully engaged in about two centimeters of brake lever throw. There's just not enough leverage in the lever to put the power into the small master cylinder that's needed. Maybe relocating the pivot point of the brake lever would help? I'm not sure. If you've got big gorilla hands and you're the kind of guy whose handshake makes groomen cry, then this will be a non-issue. But if, like me, you're a little roadie princess with little piano playing hands, you'll want to be in the drops and have all four fingers squeezing the brake levers when going down anything steeper than a 5% gradient. If you're interested in modulation and all that jazz, the brakes are really easy to control. Because they require so much damn squeezing to get any sort of powerful braking, you're in no danger of accidentally locking up a wheel. Now, I'm going to keep on experimenting with new brake pads and maybe some beefier cable housing and stuff like that. But if it doesn't go well, I'll just get some SRAM Force one by hydraulic shifters. They'll work perfectly well with the sensor rear mech and I'll be able to do pinky finger braking again. Obviously, that then jacks up the budget a lot, so I guess we're stuck waiting for a sensor hydraulic group set. As for reliability, well, like I said, I have about 800 kilometers on this setup at the minute and it's still going strong. Now, I know 800 kilometers isn't the thousands of kilometers needed to say that it is or it isn't reliable, but my group set has really been flawless. Now, some people are keen to point out that problems Sensor had with its earlier 2x11 group set 
with the left shifter breaking? Well, so first, there's no left shifting in this group set. So that problem in particular is a non-issue. But secondly, since I've actually since fixed that problem with the addition of a metal piece in the left shifter that used to be plastic. This to me shows that Sensor are listening to feedback and constantly improving their products. Maybe closer to home for some of you is that State Bicycle Company's all road gravel bike is also using a rebadged version of this very group set. Those guys over at State Bicycle definitely know their bikes, and if they have faith in this group set, that gives me a lot of encouragement. So, to summarize, what did I spend and what did I get? $105 for the shifters and the mech, $120 for the cassette, and $40 for the brakes. So, $265 for a very capable group set. Perfect for throwing together a budget gravel build to test the water and see if gravel is for you or not. So far, I've been loving gravel, although gravel in China probably is a little different to in the West. So I see races like Dirty Kanza with hundreds of kilometers of flat gravel fire roads to explore. But in China, the road infrastructure is just too good. Like every road in the countryside or wherever is all paved it's really hard to find an unpaved road. If you do, it's probably because it goes up the side of a hill that was just too steep to pave. Therefore, most of my gravel rides are what I, I like to call mountain goat rides. Just riding up stupidly steep trails like over 20%, trying to find the grip and spinning that huge 50 tooth gear on the cassette. It's actually really fun and really rewarding when you get to the top but the descents are a bit of a workout for the hands with these brakes. So, would I recommend the Sensor SRX Group Set? Yeah, for sure. In a perfect world where money is no object, of course, there are better fully hydraulic options. But for the budget conscious builder who doesn't mind a little compromise in overall braking power, the Sensor SRX offers cheap thrills and compatibility with a huge range of cassettes and brakes. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. If you've learned something from this video, please give it a like and then don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss more content like this in the future. Alrighty then, China Cycling out.